Hi again everyone. You thought we were done with this series, and so did I. Turns out, we made a few more mistakes, which means we're going to have to patch our game. Now, some of these were intentional, some of them weren't so intentional. Uh, when I released the game, I put a link up on my Facebook page and my Instagram page, asking you guys to download it, test it out, see what you can find. Now, I had a few responses, and some of those responses brought back results that I hadn't even thought of. So, we have six amendments to make before we rebuild and patch our game. We'll start with the two that I intentionally left in there to see if anyone would find them, and they did. So, those are, we accidentally, accidentally, left our add mode in test mode. So the adverts don't actually work in the built game. So we'll fix that. And the other intentional one, we didn't refresh our blockers, our shields, whenever we reset the game, when we've been back to the main menu. So we'll sort that as well. A few of the others that uh, people suggested were the control buttons are a little bit too low down. It's not strictly comfortable to hold when you're playing the game. So we can just bring those up slightly. That's going to be a couple of seconds to fix. Another one, when the player dies, we move him downwards out of the field of view of the camera. But if you're still down there, you can shoot. So when we do shoot while we're off screen, we still spawn a bullet that is visible on screen. So what we're going to do, we're going to move that to outside of the camera's view at the top rather than the bottom. I hadn't noticed that one, so if that was you, good spot. I also got told that the enemy movements are a little bit fast, so they reach the bottom of the screen quite quickly, so we can slow that down again slightly. And finally, somebody uh, made fun of me because on one of my current YouTube videos, I complain about games that don't have back button functionality when you want to exit. Somebody picked me up on that because this game doesn't implement that, so we're going to throw that in just to make him happy. So let's start working through these. So we'll start with the easy ones first. What we're going to do, we're going to move up our control buttons. So we'll hide that main menu, select our controls button layer, and we'll just move this up ever so slightly. And just make sure yep, we're not covering our player with any of the buttons. So that's one done. Next up, we'll sort out the player when he dies. So let's have a look in our player script, and we should have an off-screen position. So if we take that from minus 20 to positive 20, so we'll go ahead and play this game. Just have a quick test. We'll remove the shields like we do when we're testing, and we'll take some damage. And if we pause now that we've died and zoom in on our player's ship, we should see we're now above the view of the camera rather than below it. So if we were to still shoot, the bullet would go off screen, but we'd never see it. So that solves that problem. Next up, we want to make sure that we can actually have production adverts when we roll out our game. So we'll click on our services tab. If you don't have that open, that's going to be in window, general, and services. We'll click on ads and we'll disable the enable test mode boolean and also we need to go into our ad manager which I think we put in utilities we did and we'll set is test mode to false. Now when we run our game we should get adverts when we expect them. Next we want to slow down the enemy block movement slightly. So let's have a look in our alien master. And what we can do, we can leave the horizontal move distance the same, but we'll move the vertical distance to 0.2 rather than 0.25. So let's just have another quick play and let's see how that, uh, that affects the movement of the aliens. So we'll just play this and just let the aliens come in and move down a little bit. So that's looking uh, a little bit better. Give people a bit of a fighting chance to beat the game. <laughs> 
Next we'll add the back button functionality. So we'll open up the main menu script and I've only just realised that I've, re I've named this incorrectly. I've called this main menu. Not that it uh, strictly matters, but yeah, you can call yours whatever you want. And what we're going to do, we're going to add in the update function to the main menu. And we're just going to do a quick check for if input dot get key down key code dot escape and if we press the escape key or as it transcribes to an android phone the back button we're going to call application dot quit now we can't actually test that inside the editor because whenever you press escape and application.quit calls in the editor it doesn't actually quit the application never has not sure why but this is a tried and tested method this will work so the last one i've left this to the end because this is probably the most complicated it's not complicated but uh, out of all the rest of them it is uh, is the refreshing the blockers when a player dies so the way that we can do this is first of all what we'll go ahead and do is we will create a new tag and we'll call this shield and we'll make sure that we tag all three of our shields with shield so now we can actually try and find these from elsewhere in our game and then what we can do we can open up our where are we and open up our game manager and we'll create a few extra variables and another method in here so what we want we want a public game object and that's going to be our shield prefab a public vector2 left shield pause and then we're going to want two more of these for our right shield position and our middle shield position We'll just set these to zero for now and we'll go and work out exactly what values we need in these now. So let's take a look at our shields. So our left shield is at a position of minus 2.5 and minus 3.5. Middle shield, we'll centre that and have that as zero. Don't know why it's out there a little bit. Uh, and again, negative 3.5 and positive 2.5, negative 3.5. So we can add these in to our positions. So that's negative 2.5F and negative 3.5F. All three of these are going to have negative 3.5 on the Y. That's going to be zero and that's going to be positive 2.5. And now we can go ahead and add in a new method. So we'll call this public static void reset shields. Now, first of all, we're going to want to destroy any shields that are currently active in our game. So we'll create a game object array called current shields. Can't even spell. Current shields. And we'll set that equal to game object dot find objects with tag. And we'll pass in the tag shield. And then for each game object geo in current shields we'll just destroy that game object so now we should have no shields left inside of our project or inside of our game rather but now we just want to replace that with three brand new shields so we'll instantiate a shield prefab that'll be a instance dot shield prefab again instance dot left shield position and we'll use quaternion dot identity because we're not messing with the rotation and we'll just copy and paste this two more times and we'll put one at the middle position and one at the right position and then our final thing is we need to call reset shield whenever we start to play our game so that'll be in i believe ui manager not UI manager, menu manager. And whenever we open our in-game menu, we want to call game manager dot reset shields. So we should be able to nip over. We'll let our 
Shields take a bit of damage, and then we'll go back to the main menu. And then when we start again, I've not put a shield prefab into my game manager. So let's have a look in our prefabs. Drag that shield into our shield position. And we've also set our shield positions as public where they need to be private because we're not actually accessing those outside of this script. So let's try that again. Load up, we don't get that error. And we'll just take a little bit of damage on our shields. Okay, so our middle one is damaged on both sides. If we return to the main menu, if we temporarily disable our main menu, we can see that we still have the damage shield behind. But now if we were to play the game again, we have a full shield. So that's working perfectly fine. So the next step is just to go over to our build settings, player settings. This time we want version 1.1. And the important part when you put in a patch out to your game is inside other settings, I think it is, if we scroll down, is our bundle version code. Now, if we were to build this with bundle version code 1, it would build, everything would look okay. But then when we try and upload it to the Play Store, it would, uh, it would complain because we've already got a bundle version code 1 on the Play Store. So we need to make sure that we increment this every time we put a patch out. So I'm just going to up this to version 2. So we can close that off. And what we can also do, we can test our version script is working because now we have version 1.1 on our window. So everything seems to be fine there now. So we can go and build our game and then repeat the same process as we did in the last video to put it onto the Play Store. So this one really is the last episode of this series. I hope it's been useful. It's been great speaking with you. Let me know if you want another one of these, and you can also drop suggestions of uh, games like this that you'd wish to recreate yourself, and I'll see what I can do about it. So, I'll see you again very soon.